it seems that the Lord has impressed me lately to talk about and to look at passages that make us respond to it somehow. If you all will remember over the past few weeks, we have talked about God's love for us, how to be a better person, how to be a better Christian. Today I want us to talk about how to rely on the strength that Jesus Christ gives to us. Our scripture this morning comes from Isaiah 40, verses 21 through 31. And those verses tell us, have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. And its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heaven like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off to stubble. And they, to whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out the host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength. He is mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint, or he does not grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. as we remember our childhood. As I was preparing for this today, I couldn't help but recollect a story that was one of my favorites when I was a child. That story comes from the third chapter of Daniel. And that story is about three young men named Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Do y'all remember them? Y'all, these young men, they were absolutely true to their faith. They held on to their beliefs. And they held on to those beliefs in a world that was ready to abandon them. To just put their lights out. And these three young men were not willing to settle for anything less than their belief in Jesus Christ. Someone, they thought someone had to stand up and to make a difference. Someone had to be the first so that they could lead others to stand up and to stand up strongly and, and with power. Having a faith no matter what the world would do. My friends, these men were not willing to compromise. They weren't willing to settle for anything else than their belief in Jesus Christ. Having, having faith is more than just a roll of the dice, if you will. Having faith is a decision that we make. It's a determination that we have to follow that plan that God has for us. The text this morning, it plops us right down into the middle of conflict. <clears throat> the first 35 chapters of Isaiah 
Aren't you glad I didn't read all of them? <laughs> the first 35 chapters of Isaiah, they deal with the Assyrians' captivity and their takeover of Israel. And then the last few chapters of Isaiah talk about the Israelites dealing with the Babylonians and their takeover. Israel was tired. Israel was worn out. They were beaten up. They were discouraged. Is there anyone here that knows those feelings of being weary, tired, and discouraged? That's the way that the, Is the Israelis felt. You would think that a nation of Israel would realize that they had to stop rejecting God, that they, they had been on the receiving end of punishment, my friends, for a long, long time. I wonder sometimes if there was some kind of mental deficit among these people. They had been given centuries and generations of opportunity to turn to God and to fulfill their, their part of God's promise to them. <coughs> this is probably one of the best known books in the Bible. And I'm going to tell you the reason why I think that. Because people love Isaiah because it strikes a familiar chord with us. With us because we are weary. And there are times that we need encouragement. And each of us has been weary. Each of us has experienced exhaustion. exhaustion. And the book of Isaiah gives us hope. It gives us encouragement that there is power in the strength of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Each one of us has at times been under fire. And we've been under fire so long that we have become discouraged and we have not been encouraged the way we should have been. The Lord has a word, I think, for us today. And that's to encourage you and me so that we can keep our focus and our attention where it belongs. And that's on the Lord and not on our situation. So what can we learn from these scriptures that we read this morning that would help us, that would help us in our walk with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? What can we learn that we, that we would see the Lord for who He is and not allow our circumstances to cloud our vision of who He is? What can we learn about just doing life? How can we soar like eagles? I want you to soar like an eagle. Don't you? I think the first lesson we see from this verse that was read to us this morning from verse 25 and 26, don't look down in discouragement. Look up in praise. My friends, that's, that's a sermon right there. Just a few words. Don't look down in discouragement. Look up in praise. The Israelites, they were doubters. They were doubters and they were comparing their gods with the gods of their captors. They believed that God was failing them, that God was failing the test. But you know what? You can't compare our God, our Creator, to that God of those Babylonians of Capernaums or Medes or any of the others. How can we compare our God to a man-made God of wood? It may have been pretty, because it was most most of them were covered with gold. But how can those man-made idols? Stand up to the God who created us in our universe. Mm -hmm. The stars. As we look at the stars at night, we see those stars hanging there. There are those in our world that, that worship those stars. 
my friends, who we need to be worshiping is the one who created those stars. Mm -hmm. Who knows those stars intimately by name. You'll never soar like an eagle until you realize that God that we serve is not man-made. Our God is everlasting, to everlasting. He is infinite. He created you, not the other way around. We didn't create God. God created us. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 1.3, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. Sustaining all things by His powerful Word. God's work as the Creator is empathetic. He alone sits on the throne. And my friends, God is not going to give up His throne anytime soon. Once we have an understanding of who God is, then we can know who He created us to be. In Isaiah 26, 3, it tells us you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust you. Resting in God. Resting in God and the peace that comes from God is found in steadfastness. And our God is putting his trust in us as we put our trust in him. You know, reminds me of a game some of y'all may have played. If you were in the military, I know you did it. That's the game where you stood on something and you fell backwards. And your trust was is that your friends were going to catch you. But my friend, putting our trust in Jesus Christ, He is always going to catch us. Amen. We don't ever have to doubt at all. There's a, a writer named Charles Spurgeon that I love to, to read his writings. And he, he made a quote, and I want to read it to you. Rest time is not a waste of time. It's the, it is economy to gather the fresh strength. It is the wisdom to take occasional furlough. In the long run, we shall do more by some times doing less. Soaring eagles, when they don't scratch on the ground, or they don't dig holes looking for something to eat, an eagle soars above the ground and he gets a wide picture of what his food opportunities are as he's flying. And until we realize that there is a holy and there is a powerful God that created us, a God that loves us, who is desiring a relationship with us, you will never be all that he has created you to be. Because, my friends, we will always be looking down in discouragement instead of looking up with encouragement. Our strength and our ability comes from God. Verse 29 and 30 tells us he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. You will never, I will never, be able to do any more than what my talent and my ability allows me to do unless I do them with the strength that comes from Jesus Christ. Amen. With that strength that Jesus gives us comes power. And that power will allow us to imaginably exceed what our abilities and our talents are. Because all things are possible through, the, through our Jesus Christ. Through the power and the strength that he gives us. We're a great spot for God to intervene in our lives. And that's today. We're in a good spot when we allow Him access to our weaknesses so that He can then get, replace those weaknesses with strength. How do we find strength in our weaknesses? 
we find that strength by turning those weaknesses over to God. Psalm 61, 2 tells us, I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. My friends, you will never soar. You will never soar in your own strength. And you will never soar standing on the ground acting like a chicken. Because you were designed to be an eagle, not a chicken. The psalmist, I think, like most of us in this day and time, was probably on his last nerve. He may have been laying on his deathbed. I don't know that for sure. But I think that he was crying out for God for strength and security in whatever his time of un unsureness and une uneasiness was. The place of security is beyond, is beyond our reach. But that place of security is never beyond the reach of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is called our rock for a reason. He is the rock of refuge. He is the rock of strength. He is looking for a dwelling place of God. And that is not standing on the ground. It is soaring. It is soaring high in the sky and being with God and being who God intended for us to be. So how do we find this strength? It's turning our weaknesses into His strength. And His strength is perfect all the time. Ephesians 6 tells us, Finally, be strong in the Lord. I didn't read this verse a while ago. I left it for the good time. In verse 10 from Ephesians 4, it tells us, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We would all like to think that we're the energizer bunny most of the time. That we can just keep going and going. I love the new one that's got the extra where he punches the hole in the drum. But my friends, we can't do that on our humanly strength. We have to have the strength of Jesus in order to be able to do that. So how do we soar like eagles? Don't look down with discouragement. Look up with praise. Realize that our strength comes from the Lord. And the last one, which I believe is the hardest for most people for us to do, is to wait on God. The Bible tells us, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not faint. They will wait upon the Lord to renew their strength. Amen. First of all, aren't you glad? I'm going to take just a minute away. Aren't you glad that when our country was new in the Second Continental Congress, you know, I like history, the Second Continental Congress empowered three men with coming up with a symbol for our nation. Thomas Jefferson was one of those men, and he thought that our symbol should be a turkey because turkeys seem to be a more moral animal. Um, John Adams thought that it should be a rattlesnake because that rattlesnake, this is the only country in the world that has rattlesnakes like we have. But there was a man by the name of Benjamin Franklin and Benjamin, this is what he said. He said, I want to soar like an eagle, not gobble like a turkey. Waiting on the Lord is tough because no one likes or wants to wait. God wants us to soar like the eagle, not to sit waiting, not to sit idle, gobbling like a turkey. You know, most men don't like going shopping with their wives. They usually don't enjoy going because, you know, 
and we'll talk about you girls just for a minute. You know, when you go into a store, guys, they look at everything. They pick it up. They turn it over. They smell it. They unroll it. They rack it back up. And we're talking all 9,476 items in that store. <laughs> One day a friend of mine was in the store. And they were in a shoe store. She had looked at every pair of shoes. And he had gone over to where they sell luggage. And he was looking and he decided he would buy him a new overnight bag and a new lunch kit. So the, the, the salesperson came up and said, sir, can I help you? He said, no. He said, I'm just waiting on my wife. And the salesman said, I understand. I said, but I never thought about bringing an overnight bag and my lunch bucket with me. <laughs> so there, there is patience in waiting. The King James Version, I memorized that verse about soaring on eagles' wings when I was a little boy. But if you know anything about eagles, eagles rise and they soar just miraculously. An eagle can fly 30 miles an hour. And if an eagle sees something on the ground that he wants to eat, he can actually swoop down at, at speeds of 100 miles an hour. An eagle can fly up to 130 miles a day in a migratory condition. They, they soar effortlessly. They can combat the wind. They can combat high winds, all kinds of turbulent weather. When most birds will be hiding in their nests, what happens to the eagle? The eagle flies above it. He flies above it. He transcends above it. And he can deal with all the situations in his way. Eagles let the wind do the work. As children of God, we need to let God do our work. We need to work for him, but we need to let him allow us to do his work under his work. And that's providing us the strength and the wisdom and the power that we need to accomplish what he has asked us to do. While we are almost fainting and growing weary, God is desiring us to mount up and soar like that eagle. Eagles. They're awesome birds. They're powerful birds. And our Lord is an awesome God. Amen. And He's a powerful God. Amen. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, is what the Bible tells us. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. This is what I can do as I mount it up on those wings. God has given all of us the strength. But I see now that my strength was renewed as I mounted on those wings. In Exodus 19, 4, it tells us, For yourselves have seen what I did in Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. My friends, this morning, I'm inviting all of us to soar on those eagles' wings. I'm inviting us to do that not on our own strength and not by walking in our own power, but by running and not growing weary and walking and not fainting because the strength of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, His power and His might, He has not forgotten us. There is no shortage of God's power there's no shortage of God's might. He has not forgotten you. He sees what each one of us are going through every day. Amen. And He desires to help us. I learned that mounting up is going beyond myself and walking in His strength. Many of you who have transcended illness have learned you can't do that in your own strength. 
you have to depend on the strength of our Lord and Savior. My friends, God wants us to rise above those storms in life. He wants us to never just stay on the ground like chickens. He wants us to store, soar into the, the highest elevations, to transcend all the storms in life. And let this, never let the storm ground you from what you need to accomplish. You will never soar, though, in your own power. You will never soar in your own strength. It is that power and that strength only comes from one place. And that's when you mount upon the wings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, thank you for the opportunity to be able to take your word this morning and to know that the weaknesses we have as humans, we have the opportunity to lay those weaknesses at your feet and you will give us the strength and the power we need to transcend our lives and to be obedient children and to do what you expect us to do under your power and under your might. Thank you, Father, for the blessings that you have given to us and that you're going to continue to give to us as your children. Thank you for the power that we have as Christians. Thank you for the power to be able to demonstrate you through what we say, through what we do, through how we act. And give us the power to continue to walk that road toward the glory of the kingdom of God and the strength to transcend it through all the difficulties there may be. Father, thank you. We love you. And in your name this morning we pray. Amen. God has reminded us that through him all things are possible. He will give us the power. But you know, it's also humbling to know that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ knows what our vulnerabilities are. He came to this earth as a human, just like us, as a human full of the weaknesses that we have. Jesus Christ soared on his Father's wings. He soared like an eagle. He transcended the, the meanness in this world. And ultimately, he died so that you and I could have the gift of eternal life. We could have the gift of forgiveness. We can have the gift of salvation, of mercy and grace. Y'all, those are gifts that you just can't get anywhere else. They don't come from the store. They come from God. This morning, I want us to take a few minutes as Christians to recollect those difficulties that Jesus had throughout his walk in this life. I want us to take a few minutes to realize and to remember what God taught us, what Jesus taught us on that night before he shed his blood for us. I want us to remember that body that was broken so that we could have the gift of eternal life and the gift of salvation and the gift of God's glory, mercy, and grace, and the blood that was spilled for the salvation of our sins, for the forgiveness of our sins. Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you for the gift of your Son that lived on this earth just like we do, who transcended all the guilt and the sin and all the things that are abounding in this world. He transcended those with grace. But He did that, Father, only through the power and the strength that You gave Him to do. Father, we thank You for that power and strength. We come to You this morning asking for that same power and strength for us to be able to be obedient and loyal children. Father, be with us as we 
partake of the feast of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That we remember the sacrifices that you made for us. We want to do this because you ask us and because we are your loyal children. Thank you, Father, in your name this morning we pray. Amen. Amen. Ms. Arnold, will you come up for us? Join us in the feast of love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We serve an awesome God. We serve a God who loves us, who desires for us the very best. And we have a God who will give us what we need through power and strength. Join us as we sing this morning. Let us break bread together in honor and celebration of the sacrifices that Jesus Christ made for all of us as his children. You are loved by God. You are loved by me. And you are loved by all the people who we call you Join us as we sing. In the 618, we'll sing the first and the third. Do you stand? Here's the first
as we battle the sins of this world today, continue to give us the strength and the power that we know is available for you. Father, be with us as we leave this service today. Keep us, guide us, protect us, keep us safe. Father, in your name this morning we pray. We glorify you. I hope that each of you have a wonderful, safe week. God is with you.